It's a pleasure of speaking with Melon, one of the most successful merchants I've met in the OSRS community and an administrator in the Flipping Masterminds Discord. We talked about our experiences with the game's economy across both OSRS and RS3, so I could learn more about the differences in merchanting across both games. I'm Melon. I've been playing OSRS since, well, the day it launched. I played on day one, hour one. Um... I've played been playing RuneScape since the early 2000s, um, so over 20 years now. And I've been merching. Um, I've always I've always had an interest in merching, I guess, but I've been merching more actively since hmm, whenever Nightmare came out. Um, let me see. That was my first big merch, I guess you could say. Nightmare, which was in 2020, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, oh, 2021. Okay. So I've been merching since 2021, I guess you could say. That's really cool. Um, yeah, yeah I was just looking at the nightmare boss the other day, trying to wrap my head around it. Um, that's crazy. Dev, do you remember what item you were merching that the nightmare dropped? Yeah, I do actually. It was pretty crazy. So, um, my first big merch, right. Um, I got an, I was getting back into OSRS. Mm -hmm. um, I had like, I don't know, maybe a 100 mil bank at the time. Yeah. And I decided, I was just doing whatever for money, right? And right. I decided to uh, to do some corp. And on like 20 something KC, I got an FFA Ellie. Oh, wow. Which was like 700, 800 mil at the time. Congratulations. That's and thanks. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know what? Like, Fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for uh, a merch. And I saw that the nightmare was coming out. I saw that you know it dropped Inquisitor that had been pulled, um, Inquisitor Mace and whatnot. And that's that's the thing about OSRS merching. You know, sometimes like the rewards that come from a boss end up being good at that boss. And in OSRS, because content is pulled. You already know what's going to come from that content, yeah, different yeah. Mars 3, right? So I saw that crush, you know, was Inquisitor. And I was like, huh, I'm, I'm going to buy a bunch of Elder Malls. So I put my whole bank at the Elder Malls, just all of it. All, and, all the 800, 700 mil. Yeah. 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 I just put everything into Elder Malls. Um, and before the Nightmare came out, they ended up going to like 20 mil. Um, and I sold some. At 20, I think around half my stack. I don't remember exactly. Do you remember about and, whereabouts you bought them at? Uh, no, I like we can look at the graph, I guess, sure. on the wiki. Oh, I, um, doesn't, but doesn't maybe matter. Be like maybe like 10 mil or something, 12 sure. mil. I forget exactly what they were at. So, close it, was, it was a decent profit. profit. Yeah. Well, I sold half there, and this is actually pretty interesting. It doesn't show up on the graph. Well, when it launched, um, there was a very brief period when people saw that crush was the meta for nightmare right. that they actually hit like 35 mil each. Yeah. It doesn't show up on the graph. If you go back and look at the graph, that's crazy. But there was a very brief period where they hit 35 mil each, whereas where I sold the rest of my malls and my bank just like, you know, 2.5 X in value around there. That's incredible. Um, so that was my first like three bill. <laughs> and that, that was your first like real big four a into merchanting. Yeah, uh, you know the the dopamine rush for that is pretty pretty great, oh, right? Like, uh, and uh, you know, I I didn't know nearly as much about merching and about that kind of stuff that I do nowadays. I I've definitely learned a ton over the years. Um, I put a lot of time into it, yeah. and a big reason for that is I ended up, I guess, you know, joining merching communities, discords, because sure. I wanted to see like. You know, do other people merge too? Like, is there a way that I can, I could try and replicate this? What other examples can I look at? You know, right. And I ended up stumbling on uh, the Flipping Mastermind Discord, which is the, the Discord that yeah. uh, you found me in. Yeah, I was gonna ask and... you if you could tell me a bit about your role at Flipping Masterminds. Um... Yeah, I um, I became good friends with Joy. You know, we're pretty good friends, and. Uh, he owns the Discord, and just over the years, I guess, just because, you know, we've been good friends, we throw ideas back and forth, he just ended up giving me an admin rank. Sure. Just to help. Uh, 
I just help, you know, moderate the Discord a bit, just ban bots and shit that come in there and spam. Of course, yeah. and try and keep it scam friendly, but that's about it. I've only banned bots and maybe like two people. I I don't really do much there. Yeah, it seems like um, a pretty laid back space. Yeah. And um well anyways, like when when I joined, I ended up seeing, you know, merches that I thought were really incredible and I saw some thought process behind it. Specifically Zaylor's merches. Um he doesn't I don't think he really plays anymore. Sure. If he does, he's definitely a lot more private about it now and doesn't really talk much anymore. But I saw his red spider egg merch um, and how he basically turned like 800 mil into 8 bill. Wow. Um, and how he planned all of it out and how he gathered information and like that meticulous planning and process and how he like basically set up um, fake cell walls above other people yeah. selling out so that they would think that, you know, it had basically of course. that there were a lot more people selling, even though they weren't just so you could continue accumulating and buying, like just, just reading his thought process behind that, which is on his merch, by the way, where he uh, talks about it a bit. Um, made me think like, Hey, like if you put actual research and you figure out the actual supply and demand of things in the game, you know, the market doesn't act immediately. Um, as soon as like, say, a supply is kind of cut from the game. Like in, in this case, red spider eggs were removed from um, Nightmare Zone rewards, but because there was such a large oversupply, mm -hmm. they didn't really go up a significant amount until, you know, there was a huge spike in demand to eat away at that supply, right? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and he would keep cell walls, like say, you know, 100, 200K eggs above the current sell prices because say say I'm looking to sell my eggs, right? If sure. if I I'm not just going to list them all at one price and forget about them. I'll list some and then I'll periodically either remove them or I'll check to see I'll I'll buy like three or four limits to see if I can like kind of clear a sell wall because you can't you can't really see the the order book on OSRS, right? Right. On uh, RuneScape. So um what a, a lot of whales will do is they'll just some will also have, you know, 100 bond adults. Some people have 10. Some people have five. What they'll do is they'll, like, instantly buy a few limits to kind of test that wall on these high-volume items. Sure. And if you basically set that fake sell wall where people can't really see how big it is, if they test, like, two or three limits and it's not breaking, they may think it's a lot bigger than it is, and they'll try and sell beforehand. You know Interesting. I mean? Okay. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I explained no, that you, very well. No, you definitely did. Um, I'm I'm very familiar with how Merchantine works on a RS3, and I um know that we have a fair number of players that try and kind of um uh, manipulate the market in a sense through setting um uh, through buying items at different walls, like you're describing. Uh, less when it comes to sell walls. That that's one that I haven't necessarily heard of. And so when we kind of get into the nitty gritty about differences between RS3 and OSRS, I think this is a definitely something to kind of talk about some more because uh, we we have a lot of uh, buy walls when it comes to trying to raise the um, the price of very low volume or and also very low value items in the game. Um, but yeah, I'm familiar with the uh, the inverse of that for sure. Yeah, and. Like, um, basically what, like, uh, what can I, how can I explain? Um, so supply and demand will eventually get it to the fair price eventually anyways, right? right? Like you can't for, for, high, especially for high volume items, you can't really bully an item to a certain price, regardless of how much you try. What you can do is you can kind of trick other other merchers, so it's typically aimed at merchers, right? Okay. Into into selling or buying yeah. based on that information, you know. Because say say you want to profit on your eggs, but you also think that, like, if you if you're going in blind and you're just buying based off of graphs, and you saw that the you know two year high for it was say one twenty each, and it's now one ten, and you bought at eighty, you may sell out, right? Right. But like if you're very confident on the fundamentals behind it. If you've done your research, if you know that, you know, demand has greatly increased or supply has greatly decreased, then you know for a fact that it will go up, you know? Right. Or if you know that 
the demand has gone down and supply has increased, it doesn't matter if people are buying it. It's going to go down. Eventually, those people will run out of money and it will go down. That's just how it works. You know? Yeah. No, like uh, eventually people just run out of money uh, and eventually yeah. they'll run out of sales too. Yeah, and um, you, you just, you, you can't try and, I guess, trick these people who are also merging based on just graphs with um, very strong fundamentals, which is what I primarily base my merges off of. I like that a lot. Um, it's it's something I used to talk about a great deal back when I was uh, administrator in the Flipaholics Discord about trying to merge more off of fundamentals and less off of uh, speculation in some situations. Um, so I have a great deal of respect for that. Uh, do, are you comfortable sharing like a ballpark lifetime profits? I, I know you likely don't want to share specifics and I would never ask that. Um, but is is a ballpark number something you're okay sharing? Um. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm okay sharing a ballpark number. Um, sure. So, I've definitely made over two hundred bill profit awesome. on OSRS. Um. That's I'm really not impressive. Sure, exactly how much? Like, I'd have to add everything up. Sure. Sure. Um, it's I think it's over two fifty profit. That's really great. Um, but I would say I would say it's probably under 300 still. It's hard to say, right? Because you know, it's a lot of people know this. I guess I can say it. Um, I've been holding a lot of sites, right? Um, for the Coliseum, the upcoming Coliseum, and not only the Coliseum, but the updates after that. Um, holding holding a lot of sites, like holding a lot of uh, oh sites. Uh, sorry. Yeah, site. Yeah, sites. Right. The, the sites of Vitur, the yeah. will be mega rare and mm -hmm. i bought in pretty early on those i yeah. bought in at around 400 400 to 410 mil average yeah um i bought in 100 at that price sure uh and right now they're at 1.1 getting close to 1.2 bill they actually just like hit just shy of it at 1.2 i saw some screenshots uh, uh, in the channel regarding that yeah, I, I stopped posting them because um, I actually had people accuse me of like manipulation and shit. And it's like, no, it's it's not manipulation. Jagex has straight up said in their blog, it was the end of blog post 79. They straight up said, Multiple hey guys, yeah. we're looking to buff the scythe. Oh. You know, uh, wow. Whoa, manipulation on my part. Who, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and uh, I figured they would do it before Desert Treasure 2. That's why I bought them so early, sure. like a year ago. They've just delayed it over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. And eventually they did buff it. And I would have sold out, except for the fact that last year in December, and on numerous blogs, they have straight up said, we're not going to give it a massive buff. We're going to give it a small buff, which is what they did. Right. We're going to make it cheaper to use, which is what they did. Okay. And we're going to, and this is the most important part, create future content for it right right yeah. um i, I recall and... the Turag's hammer two hit splats multiple hit spots will be important and yeah. the coliseum the the scythe does four right uh, Scythe does a uh, three. three so right yeah like uh yeah i think they're doing the Turag hammers change so that iron men and um players with less money have like a budget option for these multi hit splats right, right? I'm pretty sure that's why they're doing that Tora camera change. Interesting. Um, and I think the the like best in slot option will be the scythe. Yeah. Just they, they typically like giving if they're going to do this because here's the thing, right? The scythe is the hardest mega rare to get in the game. Like it's not even close. Um, oh. So something else you can do to, I guess, kind of get an edge on merching is people people really don't understand how many items are in the game. They really have no idea, right? Sure. Um, so I'm I'm gonna get some maybe I'll get some backlash or criticism here for what I'm gonna say, but like for Tebos for example, um, so people have the impression that there are only a few thousand in the game, at least some people do, maybe not everyone, but there are actually over sixty seventy thousand Tebos that have came into the game, um, and the way you can do that, and it's pretty interesting how you can do it, is you can scrape all of the um, Chambers of Zarek KC on the high scores. Oh. You can scrape every single one. 
and then you can average 20,000 points per KC. Right. And then you can put that on the Cox drop table to average out how many uniques have came into the game. Yeah. That's and a smart it, way of calculating it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it comes out to like, uh, the last time I did it, it's been like two years since I've done it, right? Because Jagex will block you if you try and scrape the high scores. Yeah. So, so there's likely even more by now. Um, yeah, there's likely more by now. And Jagex has stopped sinking the T-Bows. And even when they were sinking the T-Bows, they were sinking so few that it's not even relevant. You know, they were sinking like yeah. one a day. If you yeah. go off of Ash's tweet from the period he said how many have sunk to the period of when they started sinking them initially, you can actually um, check that math on that. Hmm. And um, But by sinking, were... you mean the GE tax, purchasing yes. items, deleting them? Okay. Yes, you can actually figure out the exact, you can actually figure out how the sync works. If you take Ash's tweets and then you, you know, um, do the math on the daily volume and you figure out exactly all of that, right? So what, um, what would you say actually, the, the percentage or rate is for item syncing in OSRS? Uh, so that's like, I wouldn't really share that kind oh, of thing. Of course. That's like a, a personal edge, right? No, no worries. I, I can yeah. give you... I can give you an interesting edge that had happened, um, which I saw it get mentioned a lot, but people were just wrong on why it was going on. Sure. Right. So this is no longer the case, but there was a few months period of time where the volatile orb was sunk at a larger rate than was coming into the game. It was an oversight on Jagex's part. Um, the way you could do that is you could take the Fusani KC board, mm -hmm. and it's easier to do than Chambers is Eric because there's a KC board oh. and you could take the KC board and you could figure out exactly like if you log the the KC that was increasing per right. day you could get an average of KC an hour you could figure out exactly how many were coming into the game and from doing that Ash would tell you if you asked him on Twitter how many had been sunk so far yeah right and then you could cross reference that with how many are coming into the game and then you could figure out oh Volatile orbs, they were coming into the game at around, I think it was around uh, all estimates, of course, a day. but within a, a range that you could consider accurate. No, no, I I, I know like the the exact. Oh wow, <laughs> goodness. Um, they were coming into the game at one every three days. Sorry, I misspoke. One every yeah. three days. Okay. Um, when when tombs of a mask, this was around when tombs of a mask came out. Sure. It was coming in one every three days because the KC greatly decreased. For nightmare right. when TOA came out because everyone Oops. moved to TOA and there weren't nightmare there weren't nightmare bots yet um, or if there were there were very very little amount maybe they were still in beta so the KC in a day there like the KC an hour was like you know 10 KC an hour or something or yeah it was actually it was actually less it was like five KC an mm -hmm. hour um, three to five KC an hour and um, one volatile orb was coming in per day, and they were sinking 7.5 volatile orbs per day. Wow. Right? And because there were around 3,000 volatile orbs in game at that time, including Iron Man orbs, that means that, you know, the item had to go up. Yeah. Right? As it was sunk. So that's what happened. And you know, it just started right, pumping you saw and an pumping increase and, pumping and, and yeah. profited as a result. No, I, yeah, I love yeah, this kind exactly. of. Focus on fundamental research um, and yeah. basing your your investments off of that. Because in theory, you know, any player with enough research and enough, uh, you could oversimplify it and say smarts, could uh, you know, ac economic in intelligence and uh, ability can kind of dig in. And if they want to invest a little bit of gold, they could potentially make profit or turn a profit uh, on oh, old school sure. RuneScape merchants, uh, merchanting if, if they wanted to put in the time and effort. Um, obviously, it takes a great deal of work and a great deal of intelligence, and you're definitely speaking volumes to your own ability to yeah. um, you know, actually like collect how much KC has been on the high scores. I mean, I'm, can, I can only assume the, uh, the kind of tools that goes into scraping that. Uh, requires a little bit of coding and uh, kind of intelligence that you, you might not find <laughs> in the average player. Um, and, uh, you know, then you, you can, of course, do the math to, to figure out how many Tebos have come into the game, roughly speaking, based on reported KC. Um, but, and, and, you know, I, I would point out, like, even one thing I heard is, you know, band accounts haven't 
necessarily had their KC removed from the high scores is something I've heard of. So I, I wonder how that factors into some of the calculations. Um, um, I, I do think the, the banned ones do get removed from the high scores. Um, um, I, I remember hearing recently that they they haven't figured out a way to get all of them removed. That's some kind of technical limitation or problem they have. Oh, well, I, I don't know if uh, some get removed or not, right? Yeah. And again, like, uh, you know, this this is kind of just, these numbers would be just kind of an sure. estimate because of you'll course. also, if there have been removed, how many Tebos have been banned from the right, game? Yeah. How many are inactive on accounts that will never log in again for sure. whatever reason? You know, maybe the person had, I don't know. A and, and not and everyone's going to get life, a Tebow so on drop rate, but it, it is for the purpose of merchanting or for the purpose of this analysis saying that, you know, across all of the accounts, Casey's say it drops on drop rate for yeah. X amount of points is a, a good way to perform the analysis. At least I yeah. would assume it is. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Um, and and uh, for sites, it's like one fourth as rare as a Tebow. Wow. Like if you that's crazy. And this one's a lot easier to do because you just take the KC board. KC board. So it, as KC a RS one three main, you know, I'm actually playing old school RuneScape here in the background because I've been just really enjoying right. the game. But as someone who's only ever merchanted on RuneScape 3, could you help me understand what a KC board is? Okay, so it's it's a public board okay. where you can click on and you can see the amount of KC that boss has been killed. Oh, wow. Right. Is it per world or just across the entire game? It's global across oh, wow. the entire game. Okay. That's and it's not on every boss, and some of them work differently. For example, um, the TOA KC board, um, I'm not... 100% certain how that one works because it mm. moves up so fast. I think it might be by team. Mm. And if it is by team, um, I haven't looked at, into the TOA one too much just because right. so many people spam that raid that it makes me not want to buy those <laughs> items. Of course. And um, something about bots being in TOA already and it seems right. like a mess. So. And, and um, so the KC board for it, if it goes up one per group KC, mm -hmm then you run into the issue of if you have multiple people on a team, you increase the drop rate, right? So it makes right. that data okay. less reliable. So you would need you need to maybe do something like the high scores. And also because of the invocation system, if someone has a 500 invocation raid or a 300 invocation raid, the drop rates will be drastically different, but you'll have it one expert TOA KC regardless. Right. Make sense? Right. So that KC board is a lot less reliable. The TOB one, a normal TOB raid, if it's done by one person or by five people, it has the same drop rate. Sure. You know? Um, which, you know, gets impacted by deaths a little bit, but it's good to get a ballpark range. In the so case of, say, the, the right, Nightmare, it's right. one kill is one addition to the KC board. It's a very one to one yes, relationship. Yes. One kill by anyone okay. is one addition to the KC Great. board. Yeah. yeah. And um, so for TOB, because you can do that, if it's a three-man team, if it's a five-man team, if it's a two-man team, okay. it's one KC. Um, and it's just one role at the unique. Regardless of the amount of people in the raid, it does not change the role. You yeah. can figure out exactly how many sites are in the game within a ballpark range, right? That's really interesting. Um, yeah. So there are about one-fourth sites to Tebow's ratios. So the fact that the site is cheaper than the Tebow, a lot of people are like, oh, the limit is the Tebow. That's not necessarily true because it's so much rarer. Sure. Right. right. Um, so there's that too. And more sites have been sunk than Tebow's despite the rarity because they were so cheap. Interesting. Which, you know, leads me to to another point leading back to that nightmare issue. Um, so eventually eventually I noticed that Jagex lowered the sink, so I sold out of my items. Right. And it's also it's also a, I guess a criticism of the tax system because essentially, you know. If you figure out this information, um, Jagex is taxing, taxing the players and giving them your money, you know? So um, it goes to the merchants that, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a flaw in the system. And worse than that, it goes to bots, right? If you start subsidizing activities that players don't want to do, like Nightmare, where it's mostly bots, like 80 mm -hmm. to 90% bots. Um, right. So the tax keeps. The value of the items higher, which yeah, despite the fact players aren't necessarily doing it, it does give bots exactly. more reason to do the content. Interesting. Exactly. You're subsidizing bots, you're taxing mm -hmm. the player, and you're giving the gold to bots. Interesting. You know, so um, it's 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 uh it's mm -hmm. unfair. You know, um, 
and you know, if people figure it out and take advantage of the system, oh, the always, system that's broken, yeah. you can't blame people for it. But at the same time, it's like, should you really be subsidizing these activities so heavily if it's just bots doing the content? You're kind of wasting, you know, taxpayer money and so to speak, right. the player's money. Well, vir virtual, you know? virtual gold, but yeah, no, that that's a really yeah. interesting. Oh no, yeah, virtual gold, but yeah, yeah. So uh, um, uh, talking about um, f fundamentals, but maybe in a slightly different s scope or a different uh, category. Um, you know, I, I remember I was going through articles earlier today, kind of in preparation for this interview, and I, I see that, um, you know, Ruin Light is what powers the real-time price data that old yeah. school RuneScape merchanters have access to. And uh, please forgive me if I say anything, you already know this uh, partially for the viewers here as much as it might be for you. But yeah, of course. Um, the you know, RuneScape Grand Exchange, particularly the RuneScape 3 Grand Exchange, uh, runs on very old engine tech. And in my communication with JMods, you know, I've learned a great deal about how that system works on a backend core level. And you know, it it just it would take so much engine team resources, right? We're, we're talking to people that have significantly higher salaries than say game engine level or game level designers because these are the yeah, same employees that could go work for any tech company um because the the ground exchange essentially is an all engine work and there's no reason to kind of renovate it or to do a do-over on the ground exchange um and the the way it kind of generates median prices the way the ground exchange uh, reports data to jagex's websites is it's just so antiquated, 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 and um, goodness, that word always gets me tripped up. <laughs> um, and there's just there would be so much work for them to actually renovate the Grand Exchange and bring it to kind of a, a modern, you know, Robin Hood or <laughs> crypto trading platform level that you know you, you and I could dream of all day, any day, right? But it is really remarkable to look at old school RuneScape, to look at kind of the chats that I, I've been lurking in and flipping masterminds and see how all of the merchants really rely on RuneLite's real-time pricing data. And I, I can't even begin to wrap my head around how you all utilize it so so well and like what you look for when it comes to this real-time data. When it comes to RuneScape 3, when it comes to the merchant team that I, I mean, I would declare myself an expert when it comes to RuneScape 3 merchant team, and I would look to you as an expert in the old school RuneScape field or side of things. Um, you know, I, I think we have very different approaches to, to identifying items or to identifying trends that might be of interest to you know, ourselves or the other merchanters we, we work with or friends with. Um, and so I, I would love to know more about how you utilize RuneLite's data, what you look for when it comes to the RuneLite real-time data to identify you know, good items, bad items, things you want to stay away from, things you want to maybe keep on your watch list. You're not sure if you want to you know, jump in on buying some of it yet, but maybe you're, you're going to keep an eye on that. Um, you know, I, I want to understand a little bit more about how you use the tools that are available to you as a player. And in this case, the tools are effectively provided by RuneLite's uh, real-time Grand Exchange data. And then I, I would really like to take a bit of time to compare that to the tools that us RuneScape 3 players have available to us. And maybe we can kind of um, compare and contrast or see what's similar and what, what's just completely different between the two. Okay, sure. Um, so for RuneLite, RuneLite data. Um, so there is one thing that's wrong with it is the volume isn't necessarily um, accurate, right? Okay. Um, because it, it will only take data from people using RuneLite. Of course. Um, so because it's not 100% accurate. So if you're, um, if you're using the official client, the data is not accounted for. <clears throat> Yeah, or if you have the plugin turned off and the person who buys or sells the item to you also has it off, which, you know, if you're merching, you want to provide as little data as you can. Right. And you want to get as much data as you can. Right. Generally, for speaking, example, if yeah. you're if you're buying, if you're buying, um, say you're a whale and you're buying a lot of one item, you want to try and move around your offers a little bit so it doesn't become so blatantly obvious on the graph. And then pe some people, that are a bit more savvy can be like, hey, there's a whale accumulating here. I'm going to front run them and I'm going to buy here as well. 
and then they'll act as support for me, you know? So that's right. one, that's one thing that the price and the data that, that, um, as a well, you have to keep in mind a bit. Okay. And, um, as far as volume goes, because it's inaccurate, I actually use the main sites volume Interesting. because it's more accurate, but there have been instances of the main site volume just being completely off. And see, I, I made a video some time ago talking about uh, glitches with the, in this case, the RuneScape 3 volume data inaccuracies. And um, I was actually able to work with Jagex to correct, make a correction in partnership with the RuneScape Wiki's team on RuneScape 3's side to correct the volume data the RS3 wiki was receiving. I don't oh, know if cool. the, I, I'm actually curious now that you mention it, if that glitch that we uncovered and were able to correct with a wiki team and the Jagex API team, if there's some kind of similarity or even the same kind of problem with the OS RS side. Um, but but please continue. So, Sorry for interrupting. I, I will say I will say that before the tax system, it wasn't it wasn't too uncommon for more savvy merchers to basically spoof fake volume on the main site. So that like basically buy and sell to their own accounts right. on the GE to either try and figure out how the, the um, GE price updating works, mm -hmm. which um, I, I think is unique to each item in a way. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it works myself. Interesting. 100%, right. But, and also to give the illusion that an item is traded more often than it was. Now with the tax around, can't really do that as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, it'll, it'll cut into your profits and, uh, over time. Yeah. You know, which, which was a great fix for it, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I can't really recall the items that were having this issue. Um, I think it's been resolved. I have, it, it was, it wasn't many items that were having it. It was a few items, but usually when I use the volume, I use it mainly to, you know, see what happened a certain day. Like, Hey, yeah. this happened this day. Um, this, let's say this was released. Oh, well, how did it impact this item? You know, what happened with the volume there? Right. Um, I will say that, that the, uh, wiki can be useful to identifying when people are instantly buying an item or instantly selling a lot of it, but sometimes it can be inaccurate too. Sometimes it'll show, sometimes it'll show like, say, say I were to sell 20 sites right now, it would show some of them as buys and some of them as sells on the wiki. It's not always 100% accurate. Do you, do you know why it would do that? I don't know. Hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that sometimes, you know, it has these little orange lines on the buys and these little greens on the instant sales. And sometimes those can be a little bit off. Um, Interesting. For the reason, I'm not entirely sure what dictates it uh, or how it works. Maybe one person has room light on and the other one doesn't. And it mm. kind of like, you know, identifies it weird or something. Couldn't I'm match up a sure. buy and a sale or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not too sure. On I how would that works. be interested to actually maybe look at the code for the Rune Light plugin and try to understand how it better better or how it reports uh, price data to the API. Since it is all open source, we we do have the luxury of doing that. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. No, on the the RS3 side, um, we we can't rely on the volume data on the official site at all. Um, we we are fortunately able to rely on the wiki for volume data. Now that that is something we can do. There is a solid API stream going to the wiki for volume data. However, to be able to read that volume data requires a certain skill set because you need to actually interpret, you know, is this an item that was like that is likely to get reports every 24 hours or even under every 24 hours? Is it likely to get a price update or a volume update from Jagex's servers? If not, the wiki is going to receive basically the same volume that was reported the previous day. And so if you're seeing which is very strange, I know. Um, so if you see the same volume for multiple days in a row, you need to disregard all but the first day. And then when the volume mm -hmm. changes, it will have been, uh, it represents all of the sales accumulated between the previous valid report and the next time the wiki received a valid update from Jagex. So say there was a week 
of uh, the same number being reported, well, we could say that this new number they received is six days worth of uh, volumes of, of buys and sales. Um, so it, it takes a it takes a bit to wrap your head around how to read the volume data or how to interpret it, but it is accurate at the end of the day, which is something. Um, and I, I know it sounds like a headache because it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit confusing for me. <laughs> no, for sure. I have an entire video on it. Um, no, it's uh, it, it's. I don't know, it, it, it's a mess, honestly, and I think it turns a fair number of people away from RuneScape 3 merchanting, and in some ways I believe it makes the RuneScape 3 merchanting community more vulnerable to uh, fairly overt manipulation attempts, because we we end up being reliant on uh, free price tracking services, right? And, um, right. Uh, it's it's not uncommon for price tracking services, uh, you know, in, in particular some less or very notoriously unreliable ones, to to have uh, their their moderation and admins and whatnot report prices that are billions of coins different from previous reports, you know, in one day, and then the admins back to the median the next, and it's it's just very unfortunate to uh, to see. Um, so we we don't have anything like Ruinlight where automated price reporting uh, is kind of just built into the client and really kind of streamlined, uh, which even though your merchants are able to turn that off, uh, it does sound like you get a little bit more reliable data for items well, yeah, because than not. It's, it's, yeah, it's very reliable overall, mm -hmm. like the buys yeah. and sells. Um, it's because, you know, even if you turn it off, it doesn't matter if, sure. you know, some random player who's playing it has it on and a lot of merchants keep it on too right. um which you know completely understandable i i've left mine on sometimes too um there's it doesn't really change much just because pretty much everyone has it on which honestly you know i'd be in favor of everyone having it on and it just being an open playing oh. even playing field for everyone you know yeah uh, I'm very much about fairness and how would you feel about uh, like the official client having something like that included by default? Um, great. Yeah. I think it'd be great. I think, yeah. you know, the more data that's available to the, you know, community overall, mm -hmm. the better. I think that's, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, so in, in RuneScape 3, uh, kind of the area that I specialize in uh, as far as merchanting is concerned is uh, buying and selling rares or discontinued items. Um, it's right. my understanding that, you know, that that isn't a market in OSRS. There there aren't really any any discontinued items. There There's nothing of that nature in old school RuneScape as, as far as I'm aware. A am I correct in assuming that or is it? Somewhat, yes. There aren't any discontinued items. You're correct about that. But there are um, the, I guess, rarer Third Age items, mm -hmm. like the Third Age Pickaxe. You know, recently the Third Age Axe has gone up over Max Cash, sure. Druidic. There are items like that which are comparable. But I will say, like, the the number, the, I do, I would say they are heavily hoarded and manipulated. Um, the number one way to fix that, in my view, would be the same way they kind of fixed, um, or at least partially fixed, uh, the issue with rares and RuneScape 3, which is you take away the max cash limit from the GE, and suddenly, you know, if someone wants to list theirs for thir 13 bill, their third age pickaxe or whatever, well, theirs is going to be the ones to sell unless you sell yours cheaper and so on, yeah. right? <laughs> And so you'll have this, uh, um, you have like this, um, I guess this competition where, right, right like for, for items over X cash, mm. you were kind of forced into finding a buyer when you right. want to sell. You can't at any point be like, fuck it, I'm going to sell. Unless you want to lose like 80% of the value, mm. right? Okay. Sometimes more. Um, if it's available on the GE, um, Suddenly, you know, if it if G goes over max tax, you can instantly sell it whenever. You can instantly buy it whenever. You're not reliant of finding some guy in World Two willing to, yeah. you know, sell it to you, and he's gonna obviously merch you for it. So I think that taking away the the um the max cash limit on G E for yeah. old school would 
really really help that. I know in case you think that was really good. That would be so good for the the regular player. So you, you um, would really like favorite. to see a, a similar max cash removal for the Grand Exchange yeah. and OSRS. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you know, I'm all for merching. I sure. think that's fine. But I, I'm not a fan of, like, uh, manipulation, I guess you could say. No, my, where you're myself as well. I'm firmly against it. Yeah, yeah, where you're, like, trying to fool people into thinking something's worth more than it is. Or you're trying to fool the wider player base into something, yeah. you know. Uh, what, I think one of the I think merchants fine. Behaviors we have in uh, RuneScape three uh, talking about uh, you were talking about cell walls earlier, um, you know, and, and stuff like that gets touchy in in a number of communities because it it can brush up against manipulation. I think depending on how it's presented or depending on how it's it's discussed. I can um, I can see that. It, but in there, my there opinion, like a... and I, I will just say, in my opinion, it, that there, there's a line to be drawn, and I'll give you an, an example. Because um, in, in RuneScape 3, we, we have you know the buy walls that some merchants will create, uh, particularly with treasure hunter tokens, so different old cosmetics from events ages ago, or holiday items, you know, like the, the beach event, if that rings any bells, or different Christmas events. Um, and these these tokens will be worth, you know, th they'll be sold for one GP when these events end, right? They're they're worthless. But some merchants will purchase them in bulk. They'll try and buy up the entire market's worth, essentially, and then they will create uh, buy walls across multiple accounts for the next year or two years, and they'll be holding, you know, thousands or even millions of these tokens. Um, so if anyone tries to sell them. For below X price, they'll instant buy them. But right. and I don't necessarily take an issue with that because they're still purchasing the item for a price that some other random is, you know, trying to buy it for. Where it gets sketchy, and and this is why I have personally been a part of decisions where we've banned people engaging in this behavior, is when those individuals then go into the world to, you know, the, the whatever the trading world is in OSRS. And publicly advertise, right? Buying token for ridiculous price that they right. might not actually buy it for, just so that they can get people to then run to the GE and try to buy it to go sell it to them, thinking that they can turn a quick profit or yeah, get no, people to try I, price I check agree. it. That I is agree. that no. is the dishonest, deceptive behavior that is manipulating the item's price. They're trying to change public perceptions surrounding it. No, I agree completely with that. And I will say that's way less of an issue in OSRS really? because there aren't really, um, I guess there are very rare items. Like realistically, you can't just go out and farm a 30 inch pickaxe. Sure. But at the same time, no item is completely discontinued, right? No. And I, I, I will say that my stance on manipulation is if you're not having to talk to anybody, if you're just buying and selling on the GE, you know, um, then you're just I buying think, and selling on the GE. Yeah, like, like yeah. realistically, if someone's t testing for buy walls or sell walls or whatever, they're another mercher, you know, fair game. Yeah. And, buy, buy walls um, and sell walls are high level terminology in the merchanting community. I, I don't think most players would even begin to understand what exactly we're talking yeah. about when we <laughs> say that. Yeah, Yeah, but like uh, so, something like that, like yeah. I, I, think, I think that's a fair, fair game. game. Like, yeah. for example, if someone wants to hoard a bunch of rares and then sell them for sure. a lot of money, in my point of view, Go for it. What's the risk in that? Liquidity, right? Sure. If you can't find liquidity to sell it for a decent profit, you're just going to burn your money. You're Absolutely. literally just going to burn a hole in your money and you're going to be stuck with these items no one wants. Yeah. You know, which there's actually been a very recent example of that in OSRS. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there was a DMer recently that bought like, um, I think it was 120 something third age long swords, right? Oh, wow. And he pushed them all the way up to max cash from like 800 mil. And these are particularly the rare. Third age long yeah. swords. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they're, please they're forgive quite me. I they're don't not know as rare about as the OSRS yet. <laughs> no, that's fine. So they're not as rare as the Druidic or the Third okay. Age pickaxe, but they are quite rare, right? Um, and he pushed them all the way up to Max Cash. Yeah, maybe there were a few other people. I don't really want to name exactly sure. who did it. Um, <clears throat> but like uh, at the end of the day, if the man isn't there, you know, how long can you keep it there for? You can't. You know, he mm. bought a lot from max cash and guess what 
no one wanted to pay over max cash for it so he just lost a bunch of money like he mm -hmm. lost i don't even know how many bills tens of bills right That's 30 insane. bill 50 bill i don't know how much he lost but he lost a lot of money on them because no one wanted them so there is that issue as well where like you know you can buy all the items you want if there's no one there to buy them from you you know tough luck right yeah uh i think that's the risk with that and i see nothing wrong with that it's you know it's an mmo it's an open market where people can buy and sell what they yeah. want um which is which is a great part of the game and primarily the reason i play i don't really play just to play anymore i kind of just merch for fun as a hobby yeah. um, it's just yeah. something i've grown to to enjoy doing i i like looking at data i like looking at you know um what will happen in the game and whatnot and i just keep merching and i have several alts for it and yep. you know um well, one thing yeah, i i was talking about view it. <laughs> with some other creators recently and i i know we're coming up towards our time here so i i, I want to be respectful of your time if you have to go suddenly please no, just no let me problem know. um uh, one thing I was talking about with some other creators recently was how I, I sometimes wish that Jagex had a slightly more positive or slightly more supportive or, or even just offered a little bit more support towards the um, the, the economy of obsessed players of this game, right? Not, not even just the merchants, but the folks who really love just buying and selling or, or how, getting a lot of gold, collecting a lot of gold. Um, it's, I, I know, um, you know, I, I look back to my days playing World of Warcraft. I, I don't know, have you ever touched World of Warcraft, uh, mer Merchantine and World of Warcraft? It, it does um, ring any bells? Really. Yeah, I, it, it's, uh, long story short, the game developers were more involved when it comes to, to merchanting in Blizzard games than you know, they often, then Jagex says in RuneScape. Right. Um, th there were also a lot more uh, very impactful plugins or tools that players could use that were totally within the realm of the game rules, like automating buying and sell postings, not botting, but like batch listing all of your items, batch canceling all of your posts and their version of the Grand Exchange where you could post, you know, hundreds of items at any given time. Um, so it was a, a very, there was a lot of very powerful uh um, programmers that uh, supported the merchanting community. But one thing that Blizzard did, or, or Activision Blizzard did as a company that I thought was really remarkable, um, was if a merchant, or a, in this case, they called them auction house sharks, um, did anything that was, quote, too disruptive to the game's economy then they ha reserve the right to step in and to potentially take action on that user's accounts. So mm -hmm. they they wanted some kind of, of lever that they could pull in the event that someone was really having a, you know, just causing a negative impact to other players' experience in their games. And in the case of uh, Blizzard games, yeah, given how their system worked, uh, you know, items would be listed one at a time. You could scroll through listings, see player names associated with them in what they called the auction house. Um, so if players wanted, if merchants were potentially being a little malicious, and you know, I, I maybe engaged in this behavior myself once or twice because you could get a lot of profit from it at the time. Uh, you, you would post items, you know, one at a time instead of creating stacks of items. You would take up many pages in the auction house, right? Um, you could uh, kind of flood out, uh, prevent people from viewing competing offers in, in their system. And so that was one of the things where Blizzard might step in and issue a warning or uh, potentially cancel your listings. And eventually they actually added a tax to the auction house, uh, similar to how Jagex has added one to their grand exchange um, that mitigated a lot of this behavior. Um, but do you feel like Jagex should should be more involved or offer more support to merchants? Because you know, I, I feel like so many of us have multiple accounts, right? We pay multiple memberships. You you mentioned earlier some of the whales have you know a hundred bonded alts. I don't doubt it. I know merchants with at least a dozen, um, and so it it feels like perhaps they could take a less negative tone towards uh, towards merchants from time to time. I, I mean, I know the merchanting community a large. Or not even large parts of it, very 
just parts of it do get very close to the real world trading community and we we don't need to touch that like that that is a problem obviously we're not involved in that but it's it's problematic in and of itself and i'm sure dragx doesn't want to get too involved with merchants for fear that they get close to real world traders but do you feel like they should at least try and i don't know maybe have a, a good faith approach to to well, just merchants <clears throat> So here's here here's my take on it. Sure. Um, so first, I want to you know say that sure. OSRS is a hobby for me. I've I've yeah. learned a lot through it. I, I've actually developed you know skill sets that I can use, and it's it's just that it's a hobby for me. I Absolutely. play for fun. I do not plan to sell my gold at all. You know, I just play for fun. I merge for fun. This is completely a hobby for me. Um, I. I think that OSRS's stance, at least, um, I'm not too familiar with RuneScape 3. I'd imagine somewhat similar. I think that their stance is quite good, where their focus, I do applaud the devs for this, in my opinion. Um, their focus is the, the main players of OSRS, uh, the regular players, the uh, Iron Man even, um, just the, the players base overall. And I, I think that, Jagex needs to step in if, like, a Ponzi is going on, like, like merch clans, for example, right. where they tell, where they load up an item, tell everyone to buy something, and then they sell out off on their members. I think something like that is horrible. I think things like that have given merching a really bad name. They really you know, have something that is, yeah, it, it just has given it a really bad name. I don't blame the OSRS community for hating merchers so much because of things like this, right? Mm -hmm. When people when, hear merching, they they want to gag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they think you know people are out to manipulate or whatever. When in reality, like um, part of merching is you are providing, I guess, a service to the economy, providing stability for items that, for example, if an item no longer has demand but could potentially have demand in the future, as a mercher, you're on taking that risk, keeping that item at a certain sure. price, and if it goes to up in the future, great, you made some profit. If there's demand for it, right? If there's not yep. demand for it, you lost your ass. You lost your money. That's that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so like, um, I've lost billions. I'm sure you have too. Like, yeah, we, I've, we I've talk, lost tons of money. We only like, talk about our wins because it, it can be a yeah. bad look. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, I've posted my losses as well, sure. right? Um, mm -hmm. For example, Jagex said that shields would be super useful on next release. Well, mm -hmm. guess who bought a bunch of Ellie's? Me and then I lost like three hundred mil on Ellie. And wasn't that your like... first item that you made it your your initial bank off of? Like, talk about the irony, right? No, um, the the Ellie, the Ellie shield, it went from like one point two bill yeah. to like nine hundred mil, just like that, oh. like uh, over a period of an hour. That's not crazy. Even. So I lost like three bill on that, but oh. that's fine. Like, it's their in-game design. I took on that risk of buying that from yeah. other players, and I lost money. That's that's okay. Sure. Rev Cave Tellies is as well i bought like three bill worth because they were going to do a, a wilderness rework right yeah. they made the rev cave tally 10 times as much drop rate because they wanted the tally to be cheap and accessible right. okay i lost like two to three bill there it happens i took on that risk it didn't end up paying off and i bought those rev tallies from other players and probably a lot of gold farmers and bots <laughs> but, but um you know that's that's the risk you take you're providing stability in the economy to a certain extent, yeah. and then in the future you can reap the rewards from it. Um, yeah, you win some, you and then you're, some. you also keep the you also keep the item from going too high if you're selling, right? Because if you weren't there to sell, and those item items weren't in the game, the item would just keep climbing infinitely yeah. if there was no one to sell it, you know. And the man is yeah. off the charts. Um, yeah. So I I think I think merching as is is kind of fine. Um, I, I I wouldn't really want Jagex to step in just because it's it's a very gray area. Like you, if you start banning people for something that isn't clear, you know, mm -hmm. like for example, some guy buys a third age pickaxe and he's trying to sell it for more. Yeah. Like who's to say if he's manipulating yeah. or not, who's, who's to draw that line. Right. And I think it's just best if it's not drawn and if people do their own research. Mm -hmm. um, Though I, I could, point, uh, I could agree with you, you know, regarding like a, uh more along the lines of merchanting FCs, you know, trying to indicate like buys and sells or information like right. that. Um, cause there, there have always been very problematic groups for, you know, as far back as I can remember, um, that 
you know, do do indicate buys and sells, and it's a Ponzi scheme, right? It, uh, it, I'm sure yeah. many players have likely left the game as a result of being taken advantage of by by those groups. And I also, I'm, I'm sure it's fair to say that, uh, you know, there there's probably a lot of real world trading adjacent to those groups in the same capacity. Um, you know, when it comes to merchants like yourself and I, I, I think we do it because it's fun you know and it's also not the only reason i play the game like it, it is a hobby for me same it is as it is for you like i'm i've been getting into osrs just because i'm having a lot of fun playing it you know i still play rs3 i'm still leveling i got my comp trimmed cape a while back and working on some more 120 capes oh, nice. i'm still you know killing bosses and doing a whole bunch of different stuff um but uh, you know, osrs has also been really fun lately and you know i i do what i'm having fun doing like no no reason not to um, it's hold, you know, holding a bunch of different items and I, you know, I've just kind of doing what I'm doing. Um, but it, it's, I don't know, it, it feels like, uh, sometimes, sometimes there, there is a very negative, uh, reputation associated with being a merchant. And I, I want to say that that reputation isn't all that wrongfully assigned by the general player base. Uh, because there, there are, there is a lot of negative, uh, things or a lot of negative groups surrounding merchants, though it is also a little unfair to, for folks to just generalize and say all merchants are bad. They're all scum, right? When they're, they're... Oh yeah, I, I completely agree. And you know, that negative community definitely does impact, uh, me as well. And yeah. To some extent, right? right. It's just, for example, yeah. like, uh... Um, I'm very scared to loan friends, friends items in here, here oftentimes yeah. just because I'm scared of catching a false ban. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. you know, I mostly only trade my own accounts. I have loaned people things, but it's people that have been on my friends list for years and years. Right. right? right. Like I feel, say I make a really good friend in real life and six months from now, he's my friend. He right. plays RuneScape. I'm going to feel scared to loan him an item and get yeah. banned. You know, so I don't loan that. people things. Um, I only loan like friends that have been on my list for many years, and that's mm -hmm. basically it. And I wish I could loan other people items, but I can't. Yeah. And it's primarily sense. because of those people. You know, yeah. um, no, like I... Uh, I remember when 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 TOA came out, um, and everyone wanted to use the shadow and stuff. I ended up buying, you know, I think it was eight shadows for me and my entire team to use. Mm -hmm. But they had all been my, on my friends list for years, right? Yeah. Like it's it's friends that I've been friends with for like five or six years, and I've known them. I know them very well, so I was comfortable loaning those out, you know. Oh. Um, and then we had a blast. And you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people who would like to be able to do that with their friends, but are scared to just because of a false ban or something, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that, you know. It, I do think that it would be nice if Jagex had more staff on their anti-cheat. Mm. Also, a big issue with OSRS economy lately oh. has been, so they, they introduce these wilderness bosses, the rework, and they right. drop a lot of raw gold and Just raw gold. Okay. low requirements. Yeah. Yeah, like alkables and whatnot, oh, right? okay. which turn into raw gold. Um, yeah, and I need to be trying out very... the scorpion soon for some combat achievements. <laughs> Yeah, they're, the issue is they're very accessible to bots. Hmm. And, you know, I, I wish the anti-cheat team did get more funding yeah. to get the inflation a bit more under control because inflation's been a big issue on That's our, interesting. Uh, OSRS lately. Like, if you look at bond prices, they nearly doubled since hmm. last year, right? And, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The volume on bonds has also gone down. Um, the, the wiki... The OSRS wiki is the only place you can see the volume for bonds. Sure. You can't see it on the main site. But it's gone down, which means less people are buying bonds, which means less money for Jagex. And they just um, implemented the uh, three 14-day codes per account limit, which I believe is to mitigate um, bot accounts funding well, uh, the, membership. The thing is, like these, um, the bots that use those codes, yeah. they're suicide bots. They don't mm -hmm. care if they get banned. They just make more. You know, mm -hmm. that only harms real players. That only keeps real players from using those codes. Yeah. Like the bots, they use one code on the account. And by the time they're, the code is over, they'll be banned. It doesn't matter, you know? So 
Um, I, I know that the devs, the dev team obviously does not choose this. This comes from management. Yeah. Um, but it's a shame, you know, because the devs are so passionate for the game. You can really see it when you watch the, the Q&As. And oh. I've tuned in to ne nearly every single Q&A for years now. You can really see, like, how the dev team has grown as um, as devs, how passionate they are for the game. Um, and it's a shame to see, you know, them a lot of times they get heat for this stuff and it's out of their control, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I do wish OSRS had more anti-cheat funding. That's interesting, yeah. Keep those things in check. No, I, I think we all do to some extent, you know, I, having come from, I, I, for context, I used to be uh, essentially the head of an account management department for a Bay Area tech company. Um, and so I'm, I'm very familiar with the outsourcing industry and how, uh, you know, getting employees to handle tickets, to handle, um, you know, small uh, customer, even uh, B2B or um, in, in this case, consumer processes works. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's difficult, uh, you know, because I believe Jagex outsources through, um, I forget what it was, but it's, uh, it's a company in, in the EU. They, you know, have however many employees from for whatever cost. And um, obviously their, their processes have been pretty set in stone for a long time, but um, it, it just comes down to money and the outsourcing costs that they, uh, they have to uh, work with um and obviously we we've all heard um mixed reviews about the the anti-cheat team from other podcasts uh or for or not. Yeah, but and so i like i you, sorry go ahead if you if you look at like how much these you know c-suite level execs get paid right like like the executives they get paid so much money that could be going to getting so many more employees to to work for for these sectors you know it's like why i, I think man um, it just... it's just so frustrating that these companies pay so much money yeah. to these exec, these execs that just do their best to squeeze as much value out of the game as so, can, support you know? just it's needs to stop being seen as a cost center and be seen as a um be seen as a opportunity for growth and that that takes a, a yeah. change in mindset um, it, it's more common in young companies. I wouldn't be, I, I have no evidence to back this up. It, I'm not trying to make a claim or a conclusion, um, but just as from, from drawing from my professional experience, having worked with tech companies around the globe for quite some time prior to a layoff, however, however long ago, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Jagex being an older company uh, maybe has may, maybe views support and even account uh, account security uh, anti cheat as cost centers and uh, as such maybe they aren't given as much funding as say uh, game development which game development should be given money otherwise we we don't see new content get created no I right? agree of and course, so that be the priority absolutely but it doesn't make the other sector. Not yeah. important. Oh no, you know? it doesn't. It really doesn't. Because when you have a problem as a player, you know, you that that experience could really taint your you know impression of the company, um, right. and potentially even result in a churn or customer loss, uh, which is is terrible. Um, yeah. No, I I would really love to. You know, I I think we would all love to see their support kind of uh, get drawn into the twenty first century uh, to some extent. Yeah, and oh man, like. I feel bad for the workers as well yeah. because they're overworked. They have so much work to do and, you know, it would be nice if they had more teammates to share yeah. that workload. It would be. And if they were able to get better results as a result of having more teammates, they wouldn't get so much crap said about them. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't like to be put in a job like that where the community feels extremely ungrateful for your yeah. job. You're kind of just thrown in front of the bus and, you yeah. know, no, you have to I deal with all that shit. That's awful. I remember speaking with some folks and you know, hearing about how a lot of JMods just don't want to be seen or you know communicate with the community at all because they're terrified that you know the, there's something negative will come to light or you know not even not like they're trying to hide something but just that the community will find something negative about them or their work or and, and kind of lash out at them and you know no one should have to go to work being being anxious about their position and 
I mean, when it comes to support workers, contract workers, folks that aren't actually employed by Jagex, right? Um, they're the tools they have access to, the the systems, the processes they're working with are only as good as the money Jagex can put into developing, um, you know, th those very tools and processes. Um, so it, it's I don't know, it, it it's frustrating to see how vicious our community can be sometimes. Um, and, and in that, in some ways, I think it speaks to the merchanting community, right? We, we just love seeing our gold pouches get bigger. And we love that so much that we stick around regardless of what's happening as far as game content droughts or See, For me, like the happier the players, the more players come to OSRS, the happier the players, the more content we get, the more opportunities for merching I will have. Yeah. Right. That's how I see it. The more players, larger the market, the more opportunities I'll have. Yeah. Um, so I absolutely want the game to grow. I absolutely want more and more players to come on board, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, it's, it's very frustrating when I see something that I can negatively impact in the game that is going to cause players to leave. Yeah. You know, I know that. Like if OSRS shuts down, that's the end of my hobby, you know? <laughs> well, fortunately, so, uh, OSRS is a growing product, right? More more members yeah. come in year over year than they do leave, which is great as far as oh, yeah. OSRS is concerned. RS3, I, I believe, has a more negative outlook right now. And hopefully we, we see I... something shift or something change. Um, uh, I think a, a lot of that, you know, is out of, you know, it, it, nothing that us players can do will will impact RS3 in its current state, right? It, I, we just have to have faith in its leadership and the development team. And I, I do think the development team is extremely passionate and cares a lot about the game and wants it to be successful. I have no doubt about that. Um, so we'll we'll just have to wait and see as time goes on. Yeah, I I have no doubt either. No one becomes a game dev. Yeah. To, you know, sit there and want to make microtransactions. You yeah. know what I mean? Of course not. Like they want to develop content. They want to create the world of the game. Yeah. So, well, no disagreements. Thank you so much, Melon, for coming on and talking about uh, the differences in merchantine between RS3 and OSRS. This has been a, a really educational conversation, and you know, I'll have to reach back out to you if uh, anything else comes to mind down the line. Yeah, that sounds fine. Sounds great. Right. Yeah, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you.